Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, the bank bashing campaign continues. Is making it easier for consumers to switch? The answer. A tough day at the Oval Office. What's next for the US President? And Kevin Rudd's response to the Gang of Three claims. Our panel tonight, ABC Online Chief Political Writer Annabel Crabb, Julian Morrow from The Chaser and former advisor to Peter Costello, Alan Anderson. First, as you've just heard in the news, there's been a mid-air emergency involving a Qantas A380 Airbus. The plane has landed safely in Singapore after apparently suffering engine failure, with all passengers and crew unharmed. Qantas CEO Alan Joyce held a news conference this afternoon. This is absolutely the first issue that's occurred with this engine failure. It, as I said, it's a significant engine failure. So we, we do take our safety reputation and our safety standards unbelievably seriously. And we're not going to take any risks with passenger safety. And as a, as a precaution, we're suspending the flights of the 380 aircraft until we're comfortable that we understand the reasons for this and we're comfortable that we can operate the aircraft again. Annabelle, you saw a bit of that press conference. What did you make of Alan Joyce's comments? Well, it wasn't entirely obvious from, from that particular bit of it, but over the course of the press conference, he must have mentioned the name of the manufacturer of the engine about 90 times, I reckon, by the end of it, even a casual observer. Rolls-Royce? That's the one, yeah. Um, and I, I... Well, did he mention that because he was trying to point the finger at Rolls-Royce or because Rolls-Royce has such a good reputation that he was well, trying to... Well, I think it's kind of a little from column A and a little column B. Right. I mean, it was a pretty... Um, it was a pretty uh, superior sort of performance for a press conference, I reckon. I mean, this is the nightmare of any mm. airline, you know, if, if this sort of thing happens and starts to erode your customer base's uh, faith in, in the safety of the airline. So the decision that they've taken is actually to ground their entire A380 fleet um, and uh, em embark on intense investigations with the manufacturer of the engine in question, which is, by the way, Rolls-Royce. Yeah. Uh, which is the Rolls-Royce, I believe, yeah. of, of aircraft engines. So, look, he's achieved a couple of things over the course of this press conference. One, to leave nobody in any doubt as to uh, who made the engine and the fact that it was not him personally, himself. Um, and secondly, there was a great line towards the end of it where he said, well, look, you know, we've decided at great cost to the company, you know, and some inconvenience to the passengers to ground all of our A380s. There's a Which couple... I think there's only about six. Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's, they carry a lot of people, so you're talking about a lot of passengers. There's yeah. one due to leave, I think, tonight from Sydney and a couple from LA or something tomorrow. Um, and he said, uh, which should leave no one in any doubt about the uh, level of commitment that Qantas has to safety. So mm. it's a beautiful kind of reverse spin sort of thing. A bit, uh, a bit of our plane fell off, which should in the end remind you all of just how committed Qantas is to safety. Yeah, and it seemed like it was a bit more than a bit that fell off. If we can look at some of the photos that uh, have ended up on Twitter today, it seems to be scattered around various... Um, parts. There's uh, one. And it was interesting too, they were almost being held up what like pieces of trophy. What are, what are the odds that the bit that would fall off would happen to have a kangaroo on it? <laughs> I mean, it kind of lessens the undeniability of the... Uh, Is it still a flying <laughs> kangaroo, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, no, it's now a jigsaw. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> And Jules, it's interesting to see how social media is used now to report these events. In the initial phase, uh, it was um, inaccurately reported via mm. Twitter that the plane had gone down. But then we saw the pictures start coming through and, and, and it kind of led the way this was uh, reported. Well, obviously, you know, it's a great relief that the plane did land safely. And having made that serious point, I'd like to move on to the more flippant aspects <laughs> of the story. That took uh, 3.2 seconds. Yeah, that's no. right. Done. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, look, I mean, um, the, the way... Uh, Fast breaking news events are covered on Twitter is is fascinating. Um, you know, I'm I'm a long standing uh, conscientious objector to turning off your mobile phone while you're on a, an airplane. So if I'm on a plane that goes down, I do hope to tweet about it uh, and hopefully update my Facebook status just before <laughs> I go down. But um, uh, but look, I mean, I, I think that's part of the the way the news cycle goes. I think it's good that there's um, competition now within the Qantas group for who has the bigger ca uh, safety concerns. Um, but I can't help but be reassured by Alan Joyce just with that accent. I just love listening to him. You love listening to Irishman. Well, the bank, uh, backlash against the banks has stepped up another notch. Today, the Prime Minister joined the chorus of anger and frustration, urging Australians to switch banks if they're unhappy. If you've had it with your bank, uh, use the power of your dollar, of your business, to pressure for a better deal and go elsewhere. We've made it easier for people to do that. Uh, the Treasurer has already said uh, in October that we will bring forward a package to put more pressure on 
consumer group Choice has seized on the public mood to launch its own better banking campaign. It's pushing for a package that would make it easier for consumers to change banks. This means that when you go to your new bank, uh, you would sign one piece of paper. That means that that bank would have authority to go to your old bank, get all your details, direct debits, etc., and set the whole thing up. Now, this is a system that exists in the Netherlands. This really helps drive competition and switching. And Meanwhile, Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey is trying to steal a march on Labor, announcing his private member's bill on bank reforms will be introduced in the next sitting of Parliament. And that's before the government's package is due to be released. He says stopping bank switching fees isn't the answer. It's no use being able to get out of your mortgage without a fee if there's nothing to go to that is uh, more competitive. It's also the case that you shouldn't be doing anything about bank exit fees if you're not going to do something about bank uh, exit conditions. And uh, it would be ridiculous if the banks then went and imposed a four-month warning device on a mortgage in the absence of an exit fee that makes it more difficult for people to uh, change their mortgage. Mr. Alan, Joe Hockey's really taken the running on this one. He was being ridiculed at the beginning when he first came up. And by started, me. And that's, yeah, by, that's, by that's everyone that's on this panel. Place, yeah. That was when he was talking about levers, then he released the nine-point plan, and now it seems like there's at least a bit of depth to what he's saying. Yeah, look, I mean, if you want to ask whether this thing could possibly affect the interest rates of the banks, possibly at the margins, people might make decisions based on their legal advice that might be a tiny bit different for a short period of time. Uh, is it going to affect the underlying economics of the industry? Uh, well, no, it's not. Um, but politically speaking, I think Joe has really turned this whole thing around and he's gone from looking uh, like a bit of a fool with his initial intervention to now looking quite credible and suggesting things that uh, at least are on the right direction of promoting competition rather than regulation. Uh, and can I just say on a personal note, I mean, it couldn't happen, uh, happen to a nicer guy than uh, Wayne Swan. I mean, here is this guy who, when I was last uh, working in the government in 2007, uh, was trying to beat us up over uh, petrol prices and grocery prices and things he knew we had no control over. And I have to admit a certain personal garden for him <laughs> seeing uh, Swanee getting a bit of his own medicine. Well, um, Annabelle, two independents have questioned whether um, this will change anything, Joe Hockey's private member's bill, and because he wants to give the ACCC greater powers yeah. to deal with the idea of signalling interest rates going up. Now, uh, Bob Catter says, putting the ACCC leadership in charge of the big four is akin to putting my dog Eleanor in charge of my rump steak. I know. I, I, I love that detail about the dog's name. I had not hitherto been aware of the identity <laughs> of Bob Catter's dog. Although I want to I, know what he calls I, his rump steak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had assumed, you know, rather confidently and as it turned out uh, justifiably that he probably had a dog, but now I know what it's called. Um, but look, he, uh, he, there is a problem with those sort of uh, rural independents in the ACCC. They're never you know, huge fans. Um, Bob Catter and competition policy are not happy bedfellows in mm. any way. So that may have uh, a, a bit of a, a slight handbrake effect on uh, the, the triumph of Joe Hockey's um, uh, House of Representatives mechanism. Look, what's sort of happening here this week is that the government and the opposition aren't really saying anything particularly different from each other. I mean, having after a bit of sort of mutual ducking and weaving, they are now kind of saying the same thing. You know, what can we do around the edges to kind of pick up competition, to make it easier for people to switch between banks and so on, um, but are definitely not going to re-regulate the industry or anything like that. We seem to have moved into a rather a, a kind of like a meta debate, a political debate about whose idea it was first and who mm. cares more and all that sort of thing. I didn't, there was an interesting um, intervention today from Penny Wong, and I, I didn't hear all of it. She started talking about the potential for the government to use its own banking activity to provide incentive. Um, I mean... Look, yeah, no, I, yeah. I think that is a re the really interesting thing, and I also thought one of the interesting points in Joe Hockey's plan was the, uh, the reference to David Murray talking about using Australia Post outlets mm. as a way of making it easier for small financiers mm. to access um, customers. And while I think massive re-regulation of the banks is not clearly something that's not on the agenda, it does seem a little bit disingenuous when someone like Swanee says, oh, well, you know, um, consumers should use their power, but there's absolutely no response to uh, what I think is quite a sensible suggestion from Choice, to have a better um, uh, regulatory framework that, that forces banks to make it easier mm. for you to switch from one bank 
to the other. I think that's a sensible which, which, which really makes legislate. sense, and apparently there's something similar operating in the Netherlands at the moment. Yeah. But Joe Hockey also makes the point, well, what's the point in switching if there's no competition, if there's nowhere better to go? Well, they're not, they're not either ors, and, he, and, and that's absolutely right. Both things should happen. Um, the, it's no secret that the major banks essentially build their businesses on retail inertia, on the fact that it's actually just too hard for us to be bothered to change our banks. I did it a few years ago, uh, once. I probably am now getting screwed by my new um, mm. provider. But it does take a lot of effort to actually transfer from one bank account to another. And I actually went into my old bank and after sitting there for 30 minutes, um, I said, look, these are the terms and conditions that are on offer from your competitor. Will you match them? And I was told, our policy is not to match mm. better offers by other banks. Mm. So um, I'm not sure that pure consumer power is going to be enough to change these things. And I think that... And surely well, a member of the chase are turning up to see a bank manager will yeah, terrify right. yeah, a yeah, bank right. manager yeah, into yeah. action. If that's the not going to work, nothing will. Pot plants, yeah. Yeah, I, I am one <laughs> of the powerless many. One of the things that I, I, you know, I think has been... Although I think that on one level the political debate has been a bit facile, I do think that um, you know, a lot of newspapers today ran sort of step-by-step -step features on how you go about changing your bank. Yeah. And you know, that's the kind of information that I mean, you could have the, pro the processes in place, but unless people sort of understand how to go about it, I think people, consumers yeah, yes. often feel with these giant faceless corporations they can't even get on the phone, you know, that they, they don't know quite how to go about it. And it's a possibility that that kind of coverage could mm. help. I think that's right, but these things are almost halfway towards being what superannuation is, which is just all too hard mm. when you're looking yeah. at your short-term focus. So, OK, people can say you could save $20,000 over mm. your home loan over the next 30 yeah. years... Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm busy today. I can't be bothered. That's exactly what it is. This yeah. beer and, um, why, why is the Coalition taking on the banks? I mean, traditionally, the Coalition are friends with big business. Yeah, it's a really interesting point, which um, I've raised with people previously, in fact, uh, following the last election. Um, big business, in many cases, uh, is now not prepared to uh, donate preferentially to the Liberal Party, as it used to. Uh, the Liberal Party suffers a serious funding disadvantage against the Labor Party, which has, obviously, the union movement donations. Mm. And most big corporates now have policies of either not donating at all or of donating equal amounts to both parties. So I think what's happening here, in a sense, is that the Liberal Party is They're on the right the track. Brick. I mean, you know, we should be friends of the free market. That doesn't mean being friends of big business. And if big business is no longer uh, a key supporter of the Liberal yeah. Party... Does that mean the banks should start donating? I'm not suggesting that they should, <laughs> but I'm suggesting that it's a natural consequence of not donating, that if they expected some kind of residual corporate loyalty from a party that once might have had greater affinity with them, then all of that is gone. So you're saying that back in the days when the, uh, when the donations were flowing, that that actually influenced Liberal Party policy? I didn't work in the party then. I have no <laughs> idea. I, 